243 years ago, our founding fathers pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor to declare independence and defend our God-given rights. We will never forget that we are Americans and the future belongs to us. Well, despite the pregame hype, the president seemed to choose patriotism over politics in a speech celebrating America. Imagine that. On you wouldn't. Day. That's right. You wouldn't have thought it was possible if you listened to the media, with many predicting doom and gloom from the president's salute to America ceremony. Here to react, former Trump campaign manager and co-author of Trump's Enemies, Corey Lewandowski. Corey, welcome. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Corey, so amazing to see the parallel between what the media predicted, all the doom and gloom, and what the Democrats were running around saying, oh, Trump's making this all about himself. And then to actually listen to the president's speech was an incredibly unifying speech about our country's history. Well, the, as you guys know, the media never wants to give this president the credit that he deserves. Yesterday, if you're an American, if you love this country, then the president reminded you that we are the greatest country on earth, and it falls directly in line with what he's talked about, which is putting America first, being proud to be an American again. Look, he has restored the values that we have held dear for so many years. Our dominance overseas, us being proud that our family members have served in the military, remembering our heritage, remembering the people who came before. Us. That's what the president talked about yesterday. And if that doesn't make you proud to be an American, then it really calls into question if you really belong in this country. Corey, how, how many times is the media going to speculate wildly that he's going to do X, but in reality he does Y and, and delivers in that event for what he said? You've probably seen, how many times have you seen that? <laughs> Unfortunately, I've seen it hundreds of times. Look at the president's trip to the DMZ last week. The, the, the contrast between when Barack Obama went there behind the glass with the military people pointing out what the DMZ was and the president walking across. They said, this is a disaster. It was a historic event. What he did yesterday with the 4th of July, massive crowds bringing people together saying, look at the exceptionalism that we have. <clears throat> Going back to the campaign, when they said Donald Trump wasn't a real candidate, wasn't going to win, couldn't be successful, that the stock market was going to collapse. $9.2 trillion in new value because of his policies. The media is wrong every day about this president, and the American people know it, and that's why he's going to win in a record election coming up next year, because people stop trusting the fake news. Well, Corey, you're upbeat and positive, obviously. We know you're close to the president. On the other side, the mainstream media has been predicting the president's demise, uh, back to 2016, obviously, but, but particularly looking ahead to 2020, and been building up Joe Biden as the front runner. But look at these polls. Quinnipiac and CNN, 2020 Democratic standing, 22% for Biden across both polls. Jo uh, Kamala Harris, 20% in Quinnipiac, 17% in CNN, and yet Joe Biden says he's still way ahead. Watch. Sir, you've been dropping right, in the polls. What do you make of the polls where you've been dropping since that debate performance? And what do you I'm say to still way ahead. <laughs> so he's been dropping, and yet somehow he says, <laughs> I'm way ahead. Joe Biden's campaign is in big trouble. Look, the more people see Joe on the debate stage, the worse his numbers are, which is the exact opposite of what happened in the 2016 campaign. Remember, in the first debate, Donald Trump was in the center stage because he was leading the polls. He never looked back. He ran the race wire to wire. Joe Biden started with great name recognition, 50 years of government experience, and then people listen to him talk, and his poll numbers fall. Joe Biden, I will make the prediction right now, is not going to be the Democratic nominee. He's not progressive enough. He has not done enough for the African-American community, as Camilla Harris outlined. And his friends, and I use that term in air quotes, in Washington, D.C., are going to remind the Democratic voters that Joe can't win the general election. Joe is trying to win the primaries by saying he can defeat Donald Trump. That's a losing prospect. It's the same strategy mm -hmm. that Jeb Bush tried to use so in 2016. So who do you think you're going to face? It's not going to work. Corey, who are you going to face then? Look, I... Look, I still think it's Bernie Sanders against the field right now. I think Bernie is far progressive. Look, he raised a lot of money. He didn't raise as much as, as Pete did or as Joe did, but he's right there. And I think at the end of the day, Bernie has a following because when you give away everything free in America, whether it's college tuition or illegal immigration or everything's free, 
the, the left loves that, mm -hmm. and that's what Bernie's going to be. This election is yeah. capitalism versus socialism, uh, I, I, and we win. Corey, I would keep a very close eye on Kamala Harris if I were you. She mm. she has a well, quite a strength on the debate stage. I would just keep keep your eye on her. <laughs> look, she, no, not one person has pointed out how she started her career in politics. Yep. Not one person has talked about her record as the Attorney General of California. Yep. And so, look, that is coming, and it's still very, very early. And look, she did have a good debate, but it's the first of many, and she had yeah. better be prepared for the attacks that she is about to come under. You know, right. I think you're right on Bernie. Bernie's big problem is everyone's Bernie now, <laughs> to your yeah. point. I mean, Bernie is, is old school in that sense. And just to clarify, Pete raising a lot of money, you said, is Pete Buttigieg, not Pete Hexeth, <laughs> Not right? Hexeth. <laughs> come on. No, Pete Hexeth has a lot. Yeah, Pete Hexeth already has a lot of money. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? This is Pete Buttigieg we're talking about. Yeah, All right. I, I wish you were right, brother. Thank you very Thanks. much, Corey. <laughs>